Uh, Dr. Uh, Zufis is Professor of Rheumatology and Immunology, Director of the Department of Pathophysiology at the School of Medicine, University of Athens in Athens, Greece. Um, he received his uh, medical degree, University of Ionia. Uh, he was a PhD there and uh, received a PhD and then a resident and fellow in rheumatology. And he's going to give us a talk today on Sjogren's Syndrome, Clinical Presentation and Outcome. Dr. Zufus. David, thank you. Thanks a lot. And I thank also the organizing committee for inviting me in this wonderful meeting in a wonderful place. It is my fourth lecture for Sjogren's Syndrome this last six months in the United States. Uh, I always love to be here in this country. I was a former employee at the NIH, so I have tight relations with people and persons here. Today I have a task to present two talks. The first talk is related to the clinical picture of Sjogren's syndrome, is made to be a physician-friendly talk, not with a lot of proportions, percentages, and such and such. I'll try to give you clinical how to work with Sjogren's syndrome, to define the outcome of those patients, and give us room to discuss in the afternoon lecture what we are trying to do with treatments. Okay. Here are my disclosures. So first, let's say some characteristics, general characteristics of the disease. Sjogren's is a very common disease affecting 0.5 to 1% of adult females. Indeed, nine females in one male is the ratio of patients affected by the disease. Most probably is this is ranking second among the systemic autoimmune diseases following rheumatoid arthritis. And if you need further information for that, I strongly advise you to visit the Sjogren's Syndrome Foundation booth outside. They can provide you a lot of information of how Sjogren's Syndrome is expressed here in the United States. It has a wide clinical spectrum of organ-specific systemic disease in some patients may develop lymphoma. And Sjogren's has a very nice and interesting access to pathologic lesion. who can get it very easily, can get very easily salivary glands to study them, to diagnose patients without morbidity and mortality. Therefore, it is a paradigm among systemic autoimmune diseases having all limbs of what we see in autoimmunity. This is the distribution of age at onset of symptoms and diagnosis. You see here that after a presclinical stage that starts many years before the onset of symptoms, there is around seven years elapsing between the onset of symptom and diagnosis of the disease. What this slide says is that Sjogren's is developed slowly, progressively, and insidiously. It's not like rheumatoid arthritis or like acute systemic lupus erythematosus. It can be seen alone, and we call it primary Sjogren's syndrome, or it can be associated with many different systemic autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, scleroderma, and mixed connective tissue disease, and we call it secondary or overlapping disease. The two major pathologic phenomena of the disease is the infiltration of exocrine glands by activated T and B lymphocytes, as shown here in this picture, and the hypergamma globulinemia, which is found in around 90% of patients. And if you get 